Against a wall, and your mountain seems so tall, and you realize life's not always fair. You can run away and hide, let the old man decide, or you can change your circumstances with a prayer. When everything falls apart Praise His name When you have a broken heart Just raise your hands and say Lord, You're all I need You're everything to me And You'll take the pain away When it seems you're all alone Praise His name When you feel you can't go on Just raise your hands and say Greater is He that's within me And you can praise the hurt away Oh, if you'll just praise His name You can overcome by the blood By the blood of the Lamb By the work of your testimony You'll see the darkness go As your faith begins to grow You're not alone So how can you be lonely When everything falls apart Praise His name When you have a broken heart Just raise your hands and say Lord, You're all I need You're everything to me And You'll take the pain away When it seems you're all alone Praise His name When you feel you can't go on Just raise your hands and say Greater is He That's within me And you can praise the hurt away Greater is He that's within me And you can praise the hurt away Oh, if you'll just praise His name Just praise His name After God had created man and put him in this beautiful place, so beautiful, a place of peace, a, a place where you didn't have no worry, you didn't have no threats, you know, to uh, speak of, and it was just a wonderful place. And God had given this to, to mankind, 
and he told them to go and replenish the earth. But uh, the serpent was there. And some people say, well, why, why was the serpent even allowed to be there? And I believe the reason is because God had to make sure man would be obedient. God was wanting a people that would honor him and obey him. And God had given them everything they could possibly ever need. It's awesome. Everything they could possibly ever, ever need, God had given to them. And they would never die. But the serpent came along in chapter 3, and it says in verse 1, it says, The serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. So she knew. She knew that it was forbidden. And then the serpent comes along and says to the woman, Surely you won't die. And then he said this, he, he, he tricked her into thinking that and believing that God was holding something back. How many of you know that's still true today? The devil will come along and make you think, man, you're missing something. You're missing something, man. You, you know, you need to get, get involved in, in something, get involved in this. You're missing something. And he always makes it look good. Man, he can paint a picture where it looks good. Even things that you know will kill you looks good. But he's, he's, he's that subtle and, and he, can, he, can, he can do that. And so he, he, that's what he's doing to Eve here. And he's, he goes on, he says, for God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Well, they already knew good. Why did they want to need to know evil? <laughs> but he made it sound like, man, you're missing out on something here. And of course, he's all, he, was, you know, he was kicked out of heaven because he, he was trying to lift himself up above God. That's why he was kicked out in the beginning. And now he's telling them, oh, well, if you eat of this tree, you'll be like God. You'll be his God. They already was his God. They were created in his image. They, would, they, was, they got a spirit. They were never going to die. They had everything they needed. And, they had, and not all that, they had dominion over the world. They could talk to a rabbit and the rabbit have to obey them. She could have talked to this snake in the grass here and, he had, and, and that snake would have had to obey. Amen. She could have said, snake, get out of my garden. And that snake would have had to go. They had dominion. And, but he's trying to fool her, see, trying to make her think that she's missing something, that God's withholding something. And, you know, you need to eat of this tree so you still, you'll really be like God. But it was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eye. It looked beautiful, looked good. And a tree to be desired to make one wise. And she took of the fruit thereof and did eat. And then gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And then they heard the voice of the Lord 
the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. Isn't that awful? You know, that's what the world is doing today. They're trying to hide themselves from the presence of God. This is our sanctuary. This is where we come and, and, and get into His presence. Where, you know, this is, this is where it's at, where we can come and get away from all the other stuff. But they, they hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid. First time they'd ever been afraid of God. They was never afraid of God. They could talk to God. They felt comfortable around God. And, but now they're afraid of God. Guess what? Most of the world out there is afraid of God. And he said, who told you you was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee, thou should, that, thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, here he goes. The woman thou gavest to me gave us to be with me. She gave me of the tree and I did eat. It's that woman, Lord. <laughs> How many of you know we're guilty of this same thing? Well, it's their fault. It's my parents' fault. It's my husband's fault. It's my wife's fault. It's my whatever. It's always somebody else's fault because you are what you are. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent. Now she's blaming the serpent. The devil made me do it. Have you heard that one? The devil can't make you do anything you don't want to do. Unless you become possessed. But you have to allow that, I believe. But you have power over the devil. You have the ability to resist the devil, the Bible says, and he will flee. The Bible says don't give place to the devil. So I can't go to God and say, okay, God, this devil that you've allowed to remain here in this world, that devil made me do it. You can't really do that. Yeah, he enticed you. Yeah, he tempted you, but you had to give the okay. But anyway, she said, that serpent tricked me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above all the beasts of the field. And upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. There was a change took place with that serpent. At one time, that serpent didn't crawl on its belly. Because the reason it crawls on its belly was the curse. And then he said, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman. There's a, there's a battle goes on between the devil, the serpent, and the woman. And between thy seed and her seed, It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Now he's talking about now, he's, he's prophesying the coming of Jesus, born of a virgin. Born that day of a virgin. And, and so 
there was enmity there between the devil and the woman. And the devil from the very beginning of time has tried to stop what God was doing, has tried to interfere with his plan of man, and also interfere with the coming of Jesus. The devil has always tried to stop that from happening. And now, on this side of the cross, he's still trying to stop him from entering into man's heart. There's still a battle going on. There's still something going on there that's trying to pre prevent man from getting to God or getting back to God. So he says, I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception in sorrow that thou shalt bring forth children and thy desire shall be to thy husband and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam, he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife and has eaten of the tree of the of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. And in the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. So, before the, the fall of man in the garden, he had this beautiful place, he had this wonderful place of peace. It was a sanctuary. And it was a place where nothing really could go wrong. And also, the work that they did because God says he put them in the garden to tend to it. I want you to notice that God has always wanted man involved in his stuff. God wanted man to be involved in what he'd given them. He did not just put them there and they laid back in, in their lounge chair and eat the grapes. Ah. Uh, God told man that I give you all of this and you shall tend to the garden. But the thing about tending to the garden, it was not called work. It was pleasure. And he didn't have to go out every day and get the thorns out of it. He didn't have the problem of the thistles. He didn't have those kind of things going on and the bugs eating his crop. Hello? He didn't need herbicides. And he didn't need fertilizer. He, he had all this wonderful garden and, and, and this wonderful place God had made for him to tend to it, to cultivate it, and to plant and see fruit. And they were to eat of it all the days of their life and which would have been for eternity. But when they sin, that's when work was invented. <laughs> That's part of the curse, folks. That's why we don't like work too much. You know, I, I know we have, you know, our little uh, things that we do that we call we en or we say we enjoy. You know, to some people it's work, to some people it's enjoyment. <laughs> if you have to do it every day of your life to make a living, then you probably don't enjoy it all that much. I mean, but yet, it's part of the curse, so why expect it to be something wonderful when it's not going to be, it's going to, you're always going to have to overcome problems. And, it's, you know, you're going to be um, tested and put to the test with pressure maybe or whatever. But it's just part of it right now. And so we now work to eat. Amen. And we work to eat because there was a sin that took place in the garden and this sin was 
was put upon the whole creation, even the beast of the field. Now they eat each other, they hunt each other, you know. And we hunt them. Amen? Amen. Dog eat dog, in other words. And so we have this, all this mess going on in the world and it's getting worse. The Bible says we create, we make new sins. So the Bible, the Bible is, you know, is right about things getting worse in, in the world. And what the world really is running from is God. The world is running from the presence of God. They're hiding from the presence of God. They're afraid of the presence of God. Even people in church are afraid of the presence of God. Let us just come in, you know, and be religious and go home. God, you stay in heaven and, you know, we'll be just fine. They're afraid of the presence of God. They're afraid of his supernatural. They're afraid of it. I'm not, I don't want to be afraid of it. I want the glory of God to come. I want the glory of God to fall. I want that Shekinah glory. I want the glory where I can't stand to preach, where you can't stand to do anything. I believe that that's possible. And so because this body cannot really handle the presence of God, you know, it, it, it can be overruled, let me say it that way, by the presence of God. But we should not be afraid of God. Do you know the Bible says he's not going to give you something to hurt you? If you ask for the Holy Ghost, he's not going to give you a rock. He's not going to give you a serpent. God is going to give you something good because all good things come from above. If you want something bad, go to the world. But if you want something good, go to God. God is a good God. God is wanting to do good in your life. God is wanting to change your life where it will be a blessing and not a curse. But in the beginning, all this happened. And because, it, because God said it would happen, it happened. God forewarned them and they did not take the warning. And so they disobeyed God. And so all this came upon mankind because man disobeyed, not God. God didn't change his mind. I said God didn't change his mind. God didn't say, oh, well, you know, I made it too good for him, so I'm going to make it bad. No. That's not what God did. God made it good for man and said, listen, this is all yours except for this one tree. Isn't that something? How many of you know that's the way it is in real life? You got all this wonderful life and yet there's one thing the devil wants to bring in your life that'll destroy you. When you got all this other good stuff out here. But the devil's still using the same old trick over and over and again. But here God is, hey, whew, hey, you down there, I want to bless you. I want to give you life back. I want to give you my, my goodness. I want to give you my mercy. I want to give you my grace. I want to give you something that'll be good for you. Amen. And the world is listening to the devil. Yeah, but if you do that, then you can't do this. And yeah, no, you, well, let me tell you what. God only takes away what will hurt you. God only removes what is dangerous to you. God never takes something from you that is good. And so the God that I believe in, he's a good God. He's a wonderful God. He's a loving God. He wants to do something good in my life and in your life. Amen. Now the Bible says before the world was even formed that God had a plan, a plan B. And the reason he had a plan in place was he wanted to save his people. 
And the thing about God is he was not looking to just save a nation. He was not looking to just save a certain breed of people. The God I believe in is wanting to save the world. Hallelujah. And the, and, the, and the truth is, anybody, whosoever, shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Makes no difference who you are. Makes no difference where you were born. Makes no difference what color of skin you have. It makes no difference at all because the God that I believe in and serve, he wants to save the world. So anyway, the curse came upon mankind and here we are today. People are getting worse. People are doing ungodly things. People are walking in this world with no love. God has made a way. In spite of the failure of man, in spite of the rebellious spirits, in spite of their disobedience, God has still made a way to save us. John chapter 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the same was in the beginning with God. And all things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was, ne that was made. The Him there, the Word. When Jesus comes into the world, and even by His Word, created the world, he created life and light. By receiving the word, by receiving Jesus, by believing in him, we become the sons of God.